The best known model perhaps might be Newton's model of planets going around the sun. He simplified the motion of the planets by treating each one as a tiny billiard ball, a point in fact. One of the advantages of having a model, perhaps the key advantage, is that you can generalise it. So you develop the model by modelling something simple on a small set of experiments or small set of phenomena and then you use it more widely. So for example, once Newton had developed his model of the planetary motions, Edmund Halley was able to predict the return of Halley's Comet, even though the comet wasn't visible. If we're going to look at the behaviour of a few thousand neurons or a few million neurons, we need to have a model of what happens in one neuron. And in that model we need to understand how the neuron accepts inputs from other neurons, and that happens at one end of the neuron. So we look at the chemical processes and the electrical processes that happen there and we come up with some equations that describe those. And then we average those equations over what's happening in thousands of neurons. And then we look at the middle part of the neuron where it generates spikes of voltage that are how it communicates with other neurons. And we have an equation for that that's quite well understood at the microscopic level. But we average that over thousands of neurons. And then we ask, where do those spikes go? And each neuron projects out to a whole bunch of other neurons. And that's fairly well understood at the microscopic level. But then we take that and we average it over thousands of neurons and ask, where do they go in the brain as a whole? And we come up with an equation for that. And then we put all those equations together and we can then solve them mathematically. You've got to work out what things to leave out. It's, you know, it's like a sculptor, you know. It's, it's, the sculptor doesn't, you know, they, they see the block of rough stone and they take out the bits they don't want. They see the sculpture within, you see, that's the, that's the knack of the sculptor. And the knack of the mathematical sculptor is, or the modeler to, is to do the same thing with the, with the physical system. And one mistake that um, beginning modelers often make is to try to put everything in and they end up with a, a thousand equations and it's all too complicated to understand. They're not really much further forward. When one's trying to come up with a new model of a piece of the brain, it's a real mixture of talking to different people to try to figure out what really is being measured, what the phenomenon really is that you're trying to describe or else you can end up going off and describing something that doesn't relate to the real world. And so there's a lot of toing and froing, but there are times when you just sit and think.